Welcome to HP Tuner's GM Gen 5 training part 47. In this training module, we're going to take a look at our starting and our warm up fuel. So, when we go to crank over the engine, what our fuel and airflow need to be doing in order to allow the engine to fire up and run. And then, as the engine is coming up to operating temperature, making sure that we have the proper fuel being delivered. There's a whole lot of things to talk about. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our startup and warm up enrichment conditions in our GM Gen 5 applications. Now, up to this point, we've covered everything with fuel and airflow modeling and torque modeling for our Gen 5s. You should understand how everything works. This is going to be something we take a look at after that process has been done. So, we don't want to look at the starting fuel or cranking fuel or any of our warm up enrichment if we haven't nailed down the fuel and airflow model. So, at this point, we're gonna assume everything has been dialed in and we're ready to take a look at our startup and our warm up enrichment. And this would be on a cold engine. Usually, this is gonna be where you find a lot of problems. I'm gonna discuss how this cranking fuel model works, and then we'll talk about the warm up enrichment, how that works as well. And then I'll give you some suggestions as to what to change if you're finding or having some issues in cranking or warm up conditions. We're also gonna be taking a look at some data logs so we can reference a few things so it'll cross reference what I'm talking about in this tutorial here, things start to fall in line, make a little bit more sense. It's actually really straightforward, but we need to know exactly what to look for when we're having problems in a startup and a warm up type of condition. Okay, well, I'm gonna jump into a 2018 Yukon Denali calibration file. In this specific tutorial, I'm working with my uh, torque tuning file, doesn't really matter. Any Gen 5 calibration file will work. What I'm going to do is jump into the engine section here and let me go through where we're going to find the couple key tables to deal with our airflow and fuel model in cranking conditions. So if we move here from our general tab and we go here into airflow, under general, we're going to find that we have our cranking airflow and torque. This is used to provide a certain reference of airflow. We'll find in cranking conditions where airflow based, not torque based. We do have an option here to use airflow or torque. Generally speaking, most Gen 5s I've ever seen have been in an airflow based type of cranking condition. So this would be specifying how much airflow we need under cranking to open up the throttle plate. This is one aspect to be able to get the engine to fire off. The other aspect is the actual fuel and airflow model. We'll find the cranking V here provides us our air mass representation under cranking conditions. And then if we jump here under fuel, we're going to find here we have a cranking EQ ratio. This provides us a target air fuel. So going back to our basic underlining equation for the fuel and airflow model for any GM vehicle, it's going to be fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by target air fuel. So in this case, to figure out how much fuel mass, or ultimately how much injector pulse width, which represents the fuel mass, how much we need to get the fuel into the engine for the engine to fire off in cranking conditions and start to run right, we need to know what the air mass representation is going to be, and we also need to know what our target air fuel is going to be. So taking a step back here to airflow, taking a look here at our cranking VE. That's where the cranking VE comes into play here. We're going to have this primary table, and we can see this is set all here to 100%. And we'll also find we have a barrel multiplier against this table here. So let's look at the barrel multiplier. Depending on what the barrel pressure is at, representation of our elevation and the coolant temperature, we're going to find it has a multiplying type of effect. We also have an air temp multiplier. This is going to be taking a look at the air charge temp multiplier factor and then the mass airflow, how much amount of airflow we're moving through the engine in cranking conditions. Now that should be pretty low under cranking conditions, we're not going to find it's very high. What I like to do is just change this from pound per hour to grams per second. It's the units I like to work in whenever possible here, so we can find there's grams per second. Now we'll be here mainly under cranking conditions right about here. That would be pretty reasonable to expect. We're going to be in pretty low mass airflow amounts, but this is going to have a multiplying type of effect on the primary table here. So this is going to represent the air mass coming into the engine. You have to Imagine if we're looking at, let's say, the mass airflow sensor in a cranking conditions. There's really not a whole lot of airflow moving past that sensor. So it's going to be really difficult to determine how much air mass is being ingested in the engine at that point of time where we're trying to fire off the engine, which is why GM has went into our cranking VE here. This represents speed density operation in cranking conditions. This is specific for air mass representation when we're trying to crank over the engine. So this is where air mass comes from. I generally don't go in and edit my cranking VE values in here, although we could, but this is usually I'd leave it stock and I go after then the target air fuel. So remember, fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by target air fuel. 
If we change our target air fuel under cranking conditions, that has a larger effect on the pulse width or the fuel delivery than what we're finding here in our cranking VE for the air mass representation, just for perspective's sake. So let's move out of here. Let's jump into fuel and do our general here. And that leads me into our cranking EQ ratio. Taking a look, the cranking EQ. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.